Now, good afternoon, viewers. This is Furniture 001, or Art 001. Yes, I'm always on the quest to find the most trendy interior items, pieces to put on your shelves and to show off to your friends. Everybody, you know, last year we reviewed the Lego Concorde um, and we set fire to it. <laughs> that was great. What I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody, it's about time we go for something more sophisticated. This right here is a turbofan engine. And it's not just a normal one. No, this is the turbofan engine named the M119, which is actually the biggest turbofan jet engine model for sale on the internet. Yes, the website of Sterling Kit reached out to me. Sterling Kit, you know, they kind of make engine models of all types, whether it's actual V8 cars, but also jet engines, but also like actual fighter jet engines that have like an afterburner with them. It's kind of cool. Yes, they reached out to me and said, dude, you got to review the DM119. This thing cost a thousand dollars, but you know, something that gave me is like a discount code for you guys to use. It's Swiss is there one. You get 14% off. This is actually not an advertisement. They just sent me this product, but I will still have my very honest opinions about this turbo fan engine. Um, assembly time, 10, 10 hours. Number of parts, 1,000 plus. Degree of difficulty, 5 million stars. All right, I'm cooked, everybody. I want to build this today. All right, what do we got on the box? Family, don't beat your children. Education, brain, patented product. Okay, it's time to build this level 5 difficulty jet engine. Now, I thought, why don't I let you guys, you know, give me some company? I shall host a live stream where I built this thing for real for 10 hours. We're just gonna take one. And yes, everybody, that stream took 11 hours indeed. Here's uh, me checking the manual and here we go inspecting the box. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? Before we start off, very nicely sorted box. Let me be honest. So... Uh, this is all the little pieces that we're going to need. Now, something that's kind of nice is that you don't need any tools for this because they're all included in the box, everything you need. And we're, we're getting started off right away with, uh, I don't know, some, some sort of compressor disc. We'll, we'll see. Everybody, I'm going to have to take this stupid jacket off. I don't even know why I put it on the first place. We need to, aha, put like little fans. This is, after all, what we're building is a rotor. So we have 32 pieces. I think these are replacement parts. That would probably make sense. Yes, everybody, hour after hour, I started building, you know, rotor by rotor, uh, you know, the small compressor, small turbine compressor. And actually this was a lot of fun. And uh, you know, honestly, I mean, streaming for 11 hours, I had never done that before, but it was so easily doable. Also thanks to you guys watching me and keeping me company actually. So I, I didn't feel lonely at all. This was insanely good. Yes, the good thing is that, you know, the whole th construction is made out of metal. It's very nice to work with actually. I thought the manual was quite uh, good to work with. It was absolutely fine. I mean, it's in two languages, Chinese and, and English. That was absolutely okay. And I mean, the building process took practically as long as it took me to build the Concorde. I mean, I built the Concorde over the course of the week. This right here I built in one session, which is something that you're not supposed to do. I mean, let's be honest, within building that engine, I practically aged 10 years and turned into a vampire, which is great. Was great. And 79 cents. Will you go on D8 with me? I'm an anime cat girl. And yes, after assembling rotor by rotor, it was about time that we assemble the whole thing and make a proper engine out of it. Now, the cool thing is that, of course, it will have a motor inside of it, a small electric motor, so that our model actually spins. But when it became time to actually test the motor, I stumbled across an issue. All right, let's start up the engine and see if it works. I hope it does. I hope it has enough power. No. <laughs> All right, that hasn't worked. I wonder why. Yes, everybody, what a shocker. After, you know, 11 hours of building, it turns out that the engine would not spin. The small electric motor here on the side was not able to propel 
the whole thing and cause spinach. Of course, I then reached out customer support who, um, you know, checked my live stream and they had the conclusion that I ended up, you know, assembling the gearbox, which is right here wrong. It's a little, you know, complicated and fiddly. And so I didn't correctly follow the manual. You know, maybe I should start working in the Seattle Renton factory of Boeing. Everybody, yes, now the engine actually spins. And well, in order to use it, you have to like switch this switch right here. There we go. And slowly and very easily, the engine starts spinning. We have a throttle right here with which we can kind of increase the speed. Yes, take a look at all that speed and power. It's interesting how you can actually, if you put your hand here, you can actually feel a little bit of wind. Yes. Now, of course, this thing does not quite sound like a CFM 56. No, this thing does not have kerosene that's being burned in the chamber. I don't think the aluminum ports would actually be able to take up the heat or me. I would probably be dead. But something we do have is sound. Let me press this power button right here. All right, that doesn't impress me very much. But that's fine. Something that does impress me is this little window we have right here, which I place kind of beneath, and you can see all the gears turning, yes. There is a very complicated axis here that moves the entire compressor. It's really, really interesting. Now, the thing I really much like is that this thing is actually battery powered. It has a small 800 milliamp hour battery in it. You can charge it with this five volt cable. But let me tell you, Yeah, okay, there you go, the battery's run out of life. All right, yeah, I've been kind of having this run all day. I think for a permanent setup, it's better to actually just set it up on a cable. But you know, under one battery, it's definitely uh, long enough of a battery life to impress one or two ladies. I mean, check out the immense riz that this brings to your place. Everybody ate his furniture 001 indeed. To be very honest with you, I'm fighting the immense urge right now to put a wall drill to this machinery right here and have this thing spin at a thousand revolutions per minute and then like throw a small chicken in there. So, but it's true, the Sterling Kit jet engine model, truly a nice addition to any Amp Geek's uh, aviation sideboard. Now something that's definitely true is that this thing is immense, immensely expensive, $1,000. Trouble is though that I don't really imagine that they could have made this any cheaper. I mean we're talking about a thousand metal parts that have to be crafted individually and just that alone sounds like such a pain in the ass that this thing probably couldn't have been any cheaper. I mean yes you can buy a lot smaller models or a lot cheaper on the website as well. So everybody thank you guys so so much for watching this beautiful video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good Night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.